Thanks everyone for, for this very kind uh, introduction, Fatima. I'm very, very happy to be here today. Uh, it's been a long road, like Fatima said. Uh, we have some difficulties to get here, but I'm very happy to, to join you all on the second day of the ASEAN Vaccinology International event um, um, that is organized with the Pediatric um, um, a, a Disease Society of Philippines. And uh, we are very happy to couple together with the, with this, the Philippine Society of Pediat Pediatrics to, to put this event together. We must say that this event was being uh, planned since 2019, and uh, we finally made it happen after all the COVID-19 pandemic. But, um, but and uh, it's, it's indeed a, a pleasure that we managed to do that. I'd like to thank particularly, uh, obviously, the scientific committee, Fatima, Nancy, and all the members for all their support. Uh, the, um, the Marianne Gorjon Garbelo, who you all know, who has supported uh, tremendously all your uh, you know, venue aspects and, and all her support with many other things, and the, and the members of the MTC agency who has supported us tremendously to organize this event today. Um, uh, that being said, I would like to give you some uh, insight about Fundacion Merio. Many of you might not know the Fundacion, and so it's important for me to transmit this information to you today. The Merio Foundation is a foundation that uh, is, was established in 1967. Um, we have a Pasteurian roots because um, the Marcel Merio uh, was the, a student of Louis Pasteur, and he is the founder of the foundation about 50 years ago. This foundation is, a, is for official public interest. So it's a, it's a family foundation, non-lucrative foundation, and all our mission is to is pursuing um, various uh, strengthened local capacities to fight infectious diseases that affect vulnerable populations, particularly in developing countries, and uh, we aim particularly at the mother and children. Uh, we work in uh, about 25 countries around the globe, uh, through eight uh, local offices, and uh, we have um, various different units that, that work with us uh, around, around the globe for different projects based on our uh, strategy of four accesses that I will show you in, in, a, in a minute time. So come on, some of the key figures of the Fundacion Merio, we have four areas of interventions. You will see it uh, in, in the next slide, but uh, one of them is, is access to diagnostics. The second one is in strengthening research applied um, interventions. Uh, the, the third one is uh, knowledge sharing. So we, we promote knowledge sharing and education. And the fourth one is uh, supporting mother and children in, in various forms and ways. Um, we are about 170 uh, empl employees, salaries of the, the Marie Foundation uh, in 15 countries. And we, have seven, we work with, with 17 laboratories of excellence building uh, you know, research, but also diagnostic access in, in various countries. Um, as I just mentioned, so there are the four objectives of the Fundacion, and uh, evidently uh, and, uh, the, the, um, this meeting is really aligned to one of the, those objectives. But before going there, what increasing vulnerable population access to diagnostics we have activities uh, that allows us for that, and this is one of them is to settling uh, up infra infrastructures and equipment to enable those the laboratories to exist. Uh, we have various projects that are actually promoting uh, capacity building, not only infrastructural, but also human capacity building for expertise needed for laboratory diagnostics in different countries around the globe. Um, and it also strengthening capacity for epidemiological surveillance and, and applied research. We also work particularly in research agenda that involves antimicrobial resistance, tuberculosis, acute respiratory infections, and surveillance of emerging pathogens. And we work that through uh, 19, 18 Sentinel laboratories that are being established around the globe. Uh, we have various projects, I'm particularly working with acute respiratory infections myself, in, in various uh, uh, low middle income countries and also a lot in refugee camps. Um, improving conditions for mother and children. So Fundacion Meru is also aiming at uh, improving these, uh, the conditions because we know that even particularly immigrant populations around the globe are 
are uh, particularly uh, aimed at mother and children. We, when we look at uh, crisis settings, most of the crisis settings, the population that are there are, are, are women and, and, and their children migrating to different populations. So we, with the, the programs of Fundacion Meru, we help at constructing of medical centers that allows these uh, populations to get access to medical health. We construct also schools to maintain access of, to education. Or, uh, and provide microcredit and income to generating activities for the modern and child as well, and address it basic needs, basic needs on um, food and, and safety for these populations. When encouraging knowledge sharing activities, uh, we have a large portfolio of numerous activities that this, this is giving you just annual key figures for, for uh, we have five courses, about nine, uh, 10 conferences, uh, over 2,500 participants that are participating to that, and then uh, obviously renowned speakers and uh, numerous fellowships that are being granted through these different programs. This is just showing you um, some of the public health initiatives and educational programs. We aim at basically the, the root thematics of vaccines, IMR, uh, research, uh, epidemiology, diagnostics, and so we try to aim at these different uh, thematics that are aimed contextually to the different countries. The case, for example, here is today, this vaccinology event is a focus on Philippines. And actually, we are, in, are uh, thanks to the guidance of uh, Nancy and Fatima, we are bringing together the dialogue from people from the province and people from the central, uh, central Manila to be here today uh, to actually enable that dialogue. And I was, as I was just mentioning to Fatima, beyond this, uh, the conference and what entails in this, uh, in terms of uh, the thematics and the conferences, lectures that we're gonna have today, is the informal dialogue that makes things a lot of happen. It's meeting in the coffee break, it's exchanging on a, on a meal, and see how people probably, uh, the people on the central Manila will not, not know what's happening on the province level in terms of immunization. And this dialogue is super important. And that's why we try, try to aim with these conferences to enable this dialogue. And I hope that you will all profit from this exchange to have these exchanges uh, at, at these moments of where informal discussions happen and are very critically important. Just to mention that only in 2022, we carry about 20 agendas around the, around the globe on, on many different thematics. On IMR, we have, I'm mean, just flag, uh, cheap, giving a flagship or enhancing some of the courses that you might know, like the ADVAT course that has about over uh, 23 years of, of uh, being carried by Fundacion Meru. We have also an, a, a diagnostic course that is on, uh, basically on diagnostic that also, also have, has 10, 10 years of being uh, carried out. The IMR course, antimicrobial resistant course, which we have this year, the third edition. But we also have initiatives that are promoting prevention and control strategies uh, with uh, many actors around the globe, local also uh, uh, top high level actors like the Tripartite or the Catripartite with the UN, WHO, OEA and FAO, OEA now, now known as WOW, uh, for rabies on cholera and also on pneumonia. So our, our task on that end is, is, is big and we hope that we are just as we are facilitators, we, you are the experts. You are the experts on, on Philippines for the subjects. We are facilitating this to happen, and we really hope that this facilitation is enabling you to move ahead the agenda on immunization. With that said, uh, yes, we have had this vaccinology event for many years now, almost, I think it's almost 12, 12 years. The last one that we held in Latin in Asia Experts was in, in 2017. We also carry the same series of meetings in, in Latin America with the 11th meeting held in 2018. And we know that these meetings were somewhat stopped by the COVID-19 pandemic. We were intent to take on with this message and this dialogue onwards. And obviously this meeting that is being having, that is held today uh, for the ASEAN Pacific Vaccinology Meeting Philippines uh, focus. And we are very happy to, to be part of this uh, with your support. Um, so that being said, uh, we have 50 years in the fight against infectious diseases. We are very happy to do, uh, humbly take part of this agenda with you all. If you want to have more information, we have it in on our website. And uh, we, we look forward for two days of uh, very fruitful exchanges and dialogue 
and to have everyone present and active to, to profit from this beautiful environment that we, we have enabled with your support. So thank you so much for this opportunity that you're giving to us to allow uh, this meeting to happen. And uh, I'm happy to give the floor to Fatima Jimenez, our chair for the, the day. Thanks a lot. Thank you.